Hi, how's it going in the name of Christ? It's Garabo. It's your girl Crank. Hey, I hope you're good. I hope you're Stella. I hope you're in a neat little bunch and spectacular or something. Um, yeah, so what's up? It's uh, the 8th of December 2023. Some strange little day it is. This is hot and cold. I didn't work out yesterday because of the rain and man how it slapped me up aside the head it slapped me upside the head and rendered me catatonic but we're cool in terms of those headaches that i was talking about yesterday uh this morning i will well I, I woke up still it being slightly there but it was a little bit better um and i haven't i took a grand pa for what was remaining and i haven't had a return headache since so i did let you guys know that these spells they fade eventually you just go poof in the sky um they work for like 5.2 seconds and then boom it's done so i'm basically past the point of undergoing sorrow because of some spell that has been cast for death or anything else really that gets sent to me i am an overcomer it's very oh yeah it is hot but i forget that i have a fan because that's just what god does in my life he enables me to innovate let me just put some caveats out there i'm wearing application makeup or not you know some days i just feel like let me go barefaced if i'm not barefaced then you know if i'm barefaced then you also know what decision i made uh concerning makeup but if at all i'm wearing makeup it's not real it's an application secondly um what is second somebody give me one second oh my goodness like wow it's so hard um my captions they're not always accurate so please look out for that uh, I don't have time to edit them and uh, maybe one day in the future should the Lord award me a future uh, If he doesn't take us in the rapture or whatever, I will hire some Gen Z that will go on right ahead and edit my uh, My my yeah my edits and stuff right my captions are so that they're accurate while they're busy studying at school or whatever Okay, cool right beans and banana peels now that we've put that out there. Let's just also put out there that this is a hot day in this country and when it's hot we like do this okay okay uh right i don't really know what to say except that do you remember i told you guys that these days i'm just gonna rock up speak for like five seconds unless i'm given some other um, understanding unless i'm told a new thing unless i am made to walk in a new development we're not sharing good old-fashioned repeat offenders in the kingdom of darkness if you want to repeat offend do you but do not anticipate a mention anymore so uh pretty much good old uh, what is the same old same old type setup thing but i have this question right so maybe i might not speak for just 20 minutes maybe i might speak a little bit longer i don't know we'll see where's my head scratcher y'all know i have a head scratcher when my scalp starts to get itchy i need to leave my protective style in for a long time and i don't care if it gets all old and fuzzy yeah to eradicate the itch because i see now that maybe what might actually fix my itchy scalp is not even so much washing my hair and correcting the circumstance it's just leaving it alone for like weeks and then it'll like stop itching anyway whatever yeah uh this is one question I'm, I'm trying to throw out there in the midst of everybody that wants questions thrown in them and they're missed I'm seeking justice. I want my enemies lambasted and handled. I want them thrown in some kind of a whirlwind of regret because they got handled. People absent of them being handled for what they do never really walk in a regret. And the nice thing about regret is that it can produce repentance because when you're walking in regret given that you've been bongafied and exposed and everything yeah you get lonely sometimes because people now don't want to hang with you because you're so exposed you're just not that nice to be with anymore because you now might make me catch whatever you have because you're basically a leper and when you're living like a leper in society 
you sit down and you think, you know, mm, you labor on thought. Why, why, I just perpetually, that's you, always like, your brain is like that all the time. Because it's so hard to think, right? That you might actually also start thinking about, I don't know, hellfire, you know? What if it's real? You might actually start thinking about eternity, you know? What if that's a thing? You might start thinking about God, you know? What if that's a thing? You might start thinking about eternal consequences of one's actions and so maybe be healed. So really, my desires are evangelistic. They are evangelistic. Um, I'm dealing with an obstinate generation that is thoroughly trying to get away with murder. Witchcraft is an ugly thing. It's, it's a nasty little sport. It is a stabbing of a person in the back, leaving them just kind of stabbed with the hope that nobody's gonna find out that that happened and then when people find out anyway it's like oh snap like why must i be exposed as a witch but like you know you shouldn't have done witchcraft <laughs> if you didn't want to be exposed as a witch you ought to have foreseen that very potentially you might get i don't know caught but now that you've been busted and everything i guess you're not famous anymore are you ah oh guess you're not popular anymore and now that you're not popular and you're all by your lonesome you might actually escape the fire yeah why because now your brain is going to slap you it's going to kick you as with the hoof of a donkey from the back the hind leg of a donkey gonna be right here center of your skull yeah and it's like oh my Look at me seizing my particular status as Mr. Popular. Why are you alone now, Mrs. Popular? Where are all your goons now? Miss Popular, where your entourage at? I guess it's nowhere to be found because you're not popular anymore. Yeah. So you see, this is tough love. What I'm doing is adoration. It's totally adoration. I am adoring. Do I not ooze adoration? Am I not oozing love? Are there no petals of flowers blossoming on the screen? Just, you know, giving admiration adoration besottment it's just love ecstasy of wonderment in the adoring lane of heaven this is loving whether or not you want to see it as adoration is irrelevant because at this point Angnandaba. okay i cannot daba i do that means i don't care i don't care because i am dealing with quite the nasty bunch of people who also similarly pride themselves in not caring and no okay this is not the equivalent of a not like what's this repaying evil for evil or whatever it's the tantamount of putting a foot down because i'm dealing with a wicked and a perverse generation that is obstinate and so the lord has given me just like with ezekiel like a head of brass it's hard and stuff and so i use base so it's not that i'm glad when you suck it's that i'm tired that you've sucked for so long that i stopped caring that you continue to suck um yeah we're done mm, yeah that's a thing i'm not doing this anymore not anymore i'm not doing this another day one can dream on if at all they anticipate that's not a reality but just in case you are a little bit more realistic we appreciate your presence it's that basic mm. I want people to be slapped. I want them to be kicked as with the hind legs, with a hoof, no a, a very hard hoof made of all different kinds of calloused materials of a donkey. Never mind a horse, because a horse can be brittled. It's not as stubborn. We need like a stubborn animal, like a mule, just right in the center of the face. And now that you've got yourself a blue eye, looking like you've had a rhinoplasty maybe you might be a little less insane i don't know humility before honor pride before a fall and stuff so now that you've fallen splat on the ground perhaps you might wear humility i don't know so this is tough love 
And whether you see it as love or not is like I said irrelevant. I don't care anymore. I mina. I thoroughly do not care about the reception at this point by anybody because when you've been in a battlefield with a bunch of people that lost the war before it even started but I don't know they're pushing a rifle anyway you're gonna just start like shooting into thin air hoping like a stray bullet hits one of them because they are that obstinate and frankly there's no saving them I desire that you should live and stuff really I do as cynical as I am Mm. but it is apparent that you don't want to live and I have a thing about that I've always just been disinterested in dead beats that don't want improvement that don't want to change that feel as if though their drug addiction is a virtue and so really if it ain't broke don't fix it when 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 people are like that I have a history of just being like okay <laughs> Do you, with your whirlwind of destruction, twist in that wind? Do you? And if at all it is twisting in the center of the ocean, drown in peace. Drown in peace. Like, do you? Unfortunately, I, you know, or maybe fortunately, depending on from which vantage point you want to look at it, I then got thrown into this trial by a holy god that I guess was working on my character too, as well as perhaps yours. Mm. And in working on my character was like, you're not gonna get to just walk away anymore, carabo. Sister INFJ with your door slam. Mm, where you just walk away from, you know, people who insist that their drug addiction is a whole character virtue. Yeah, you're not gonna get to walk away from these junkies because, you know, you might be good at goodbye, but I'm God and I'm not. And I'm like, oh goodness, wow. Like, I just cringe thinking about the fact that God cares <laughs> about you who have been abusing me because I don't. And, you know, I'm not holy as I ought to be. And so I cringe at the prospect of talking again to junkies who think their drug addiction is a virtue i cringe because there are people y'all gotta come on some of y'all gotta agree if at all you're listening to me with any vibrancy of an ear as opposed to a dull one you gotta agree whatever little handful of an audience i have like please i'm not going to speak out here like one that's got like thousands of people looking at me i'm pretty aware it's a scantily perused the YouTube that I've got over here and really I'm being gazed upon by people who keep on bewitching my content hoping that it never grows anyway mm. but just in case I missed that conglomerate there are one or two sober souls I bet you do agree that um what is this what did I want to say some people just need to be left like just walked away from like skedaddled from Hey, but you can't push a pill down a person's throat if it's tough to swallow and they don't want to do it like just let them go especially if they're not you know gonna shatter your soul or your heart if they died if they you know stabbed their toe against the corner of a bed you wouldn't be moved you wouldn't be perturbed you wouldn't be shaken even in the slightest if at all you wouldn't miss them if uh, if they like you know passed away yeah it is especially when they're like that <laughs> that you're like you know what it's okay like the earth has so many people and you're just not going to win a nerve in my brain that's going to come out of the head like that of stressed eric and strangle me you're not gonna do that like, i'm not going to have stress over it. not you like who, what who are you i met you just yesterday a lot of my afflictors are <laughs> just these like I, like whatever the people i would not miss i would have probably like i'm so distant from them that i wouldn't even find out I, I, until the great white throne judgment that they passed away like i just i wouldn't know like i would not know because nobody would ever contact me to let me know because they're irrelevant <laughs> they're no one they're no one to me i met them for five seconds and they acted so terribly that i was like i'm sorry like you're a stranger <laughs> Hi, bye girl bye boy bye like it's cool yo yeah. um, some of these people are complete strangers that decided to disrespect a stranger that you know personality type i'm an infj I, I i can linger around people for a minute but when i'm done i'm done 
I'm way too good and goodbye. I'm way too good and goodbye. Everton, I can leave. Uh, me and not to leave all. And, and I'm frustrating that way. I don't beg. I, t I just don't. Especially not random new creeps. You know when I've been suffering so badly. When you go through a lot, that's when you find out how disrespectful humanity is. Like a person that doesn't know you will thoroughly give you added grief, lots of it, because they found out that you're in a position, you, you have no power to fight back. Like, just because you that you have nothing. Yes, like it. It's been rough. And these are the kinds of people that would be especially easy to just get out from the midst of. Just get out, Nji. Just get out. Yeah. Uh and then and then god lingers you around them like just keeps you hanging around randos that you don't give two hoots about like you could not care less if they dropped in the ground not even a single family member of theirs would fight would think to call you and let you know like two three years five can progress easily with you still thinking they're alive and then one day you you just find out by happenstance that oh they died like five years ago who the thunk it? Ah, oh, well, okay. Well, I mean, I, I guess I rest in peace. <laughs> like five years later. Remember when, when, when Kobe Bryant died? How Stacy Dash rocked up like months down the line on some. Oh my goodness, I didn't know Kobe died. And everybody was like, my goodness, Stacy, what corner of the world? What what little hole do you live in? Yeah, well, I've got a bit of a Stacy Dash, you know constitution about me concerning certain people who feel like they ought to be as important as Kobe Bryant when they die such that the whole world would learn yeah that they've passed away and then here in lies got up with being like oh they're dead they're dead oh man that's so sad when girl it's been almost a year oh maybe I shouldn't have said anything Whew. Mm. yeah that's the level of pomp <laughs> and arrogance that has encircled my life people who were i guess quite important in wherever they were at like people loved them wherever they came from they were relevant they were needed they were i guess worthy of uh, 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 attention or whatever in their spaces but then they come to my ministry and learn that I'm, i've got nothing some of which then like, like actually knocked on my door, tapped on my shoulder. I responded to them for like all of five seconds. And because they're used to a world of adoration, mm, that's what's good. They just expected that I'm gonna award it to them. And it's just like that. Yeah, I give a rat to fella and just love them. The way that they're so used to being loved because they're spoiled, silver spoon in their mouths by the world around them that kisses behind. And then when I don't act like that, they out you on some girl who does not know Kobe Bryant has died. I'll tell you some people yeah there are people who just like don't know and they're also in the same space like the entertainment industry mmm Stacey Dash as a celebrity weeks months progressed and the chick was like had no clue that Kobe was dead yeah mmm well there are some people that I would have known who are dead and I'm expected to know stuff like that and when I don't find out get all upset at my ignorance People getting all upset throwing their incredible toys at the car and at what they call my ignorance when it's not so much ignorance as it is priorities or you know but who are you exactly what's your name ah okay thank you for letting me know uh, next time I'll jot it down on a piece of paper put it on my refrigerator so I won't forget it yeah in the morning when I wake up I'll just like stare longingly into this like piece of paper on the refrigerator just so should I bump into you again in the street I'll call you Tom instead of hey you how are you oh I've got such people as those looking at me expecting me to care just ever so slightly more about them when I don't and I would love to get out door slam them the way that I've been always able to leave Tom's door slammed people that I don't care that you're here or not especially when you give me attitude when when you pass me shade like yo <laughs> bye <laughs> I, I, like it's okay I don't need one extra iota of stress in my life from some stranger like I, I just don't mm. And then there are those that make themselves strangers so they were in your life they were they were at some point they were a friend you cared at some point somebody would have picked up a phone and called you if they died but then like they estranged themselves from you by persecuting the living daylights out of you they um what is this betrayed you that's the word that's the that's the that's the key term yeah they betrayed the creepy random crap out of you and now you're a total stranger to them
you're a stranger to them and so they're forcing as you're a stranger now stranger danger becomes a thing stranger danger becomes a thing yeah um and so really avoid be afraid be very afraid don't talk to strangers i mean didn't your parents teach you that as a child Mm. and then this like stranger danger wants to knock on your door like five years have progressed since they awarded you attitude mm. stranger danger yeah stranger danger awarded you attitude and now they're like knocking on your door and you're supposed to like remember what they look like the contours of their face you're supposed to remember that they've got a birthmark on their back on their like shoulder honey you made yourself a stranger i just i don't i don't care now you're supposed to know what their first child's name is the cesarean section they had now you're supposed to basically know that they've got a scar down there like it's okay like i don't care anymore you're a stranger and in your presence i am in danger because you made yourself a dangerous stranger you made yourself that human trafficking creep like that's what you did you made yourself the dude that flashes the little children in the park and so because you made yourself that stranger danger run the parents say run please listen to your parents don't be disobedient little children and here it is that i'm telling my parent in heaven i want to run it's a stranger look at it i don't recognize it it is no longer the same chick i grew up with it's not my best friend i don't know who she is no that's not my cousin uh uh nah. we're estranged i want nothing to do with these people god it's stranger danger don't you want me not to talk to strangers i'm in trouble here mm. and then god basically tells you i put you in this position for such a time as this and i'm like oh so now I gotta deal with stranger danger. Okay, yeah. I'm that like seven year old child in the presence of a pedophile. And I gotta just, you know, sit it out, ride it out, basically trust that God will protect me. And I know that he will, but you know, I do have some bones to pick. I'm, I'm grumbling. I'm complaining a lot to God these days on some, I'm in the midst of pedophiles as a child. I'm in the midst of rapists as a woman barely dressed. I am wearing just a bra and panties in the midst of a rapist. Like, this is gonna get bad soon. I'm in the midst of, of, of like, you know, uh, I'm walking in a dark alleyway at night in the midst of, like, a, a whole serial killer, you know, that's busy butchering women in that same alleyway. Lord almighty, what in the world? Like, get me out of here. I want to leave. This is stranger danger. I want to get out. These people have made themselves strangers to me. And they've made themselves particularly quite dangerous strangers. They've made themselves like pedophiles in the presence of children. And I'm way too good to go by. And I'm also smart enough to know not to kind of hover around these alleyways at night. Can I just go? Can I just go? Like I cannot be like almost like I've just woken up in the morning in my bathroom brushing my teeth in my bra and panties, but in the middle of a rapist just standing right there like i'm in trouble on that day like you know i'm encircled by like little fugitives all over the internet that are thoroughly running away from the lives that are messed up that they live with they've messed up and they've committed crimes in those areas yeah and they're like trying to run away anywhere else <laughs> and so they find some people on the internet that are they're going to beguile they find some people on the internet that they're going to deceive Mm, into accommodating them when their whole neighborhoods want nothing to do with them when people in their own lives can't stand them when, when people that they come from know that this one keep your children away from them otherwise you will your child's innocence will be taken away this is the kind of person you don't let your kids play around with because next thing your kid is missing like nah stranger danger but nah these strangers they're all over the internet mm, jesus christ and you've made me like a child where i've got no money no love no respect i have got no ability to take care of myself i'm entirely dependent on people and um yeah you know you've placed me before dangerous strangers you've placed me before dangerous strangers and i just want to go and be safe already why will you not rescue me from all of these menaces that are fugitives from their own lives and are trying to hop into mine because they feel as if though it don't get no better than this because what's a man like me where's a man like me gonna find a good woman unless i deceive one on the internet 
because all the women in my neighborhood know I stank. But she don't. And I'm encircled by such dangerous strangers. Encircled by men divorcing wives for no other reason than the fact that they cheated 10 times on these women and now they want a third or a second wife. Yeah, I'm encircled by jealous freaky chicks. Calling themselves Christians, writing me emails, and then three weeks later casting spells on me to never be okay. Stranger danger. Men and women alike, just a circus. And this Seriki, see, my oh my. Mm. How I just gotta ride it out. <laughs> I just have to ride out the circus. That's what's good. And I don't feel safe. Some people of which, like I said, you know. I did know them at some point, but then they became strangers. Because, I mean, how do you not become a stranger when as a best friend, you make a decision that you're gonna just shatter my whole future. Make sure that I marry a little bit of a menacing beast, uh, you know, similar to the one that you married. Make sure that I'm never okay in life. Then, I mean, whoa, that birthmark on your shoulder, who cares? <laughs> to me, it's as good as a tattoo that can be removed by laser. Like, I don't care. Yeah. I don't care that you're a diabetic and you gotta go keep on like taking shots of insulin I say like, yo, I don't care that you have to like spend your life swallowing ARVs because you were diagnosed with HIV I just don't care anymore. I don't care I don't care to find out if you proper you you succeed you you finally conquered your addiction to cigarettes Have you finally you know succeed succeeded to stop smoking? Oh, congratulations girl. You did. Ah, oh, yes. Welcome to the party So let's go in and, and do a a, a, a post addiction celebration luncheon where we will all be glad that we no longer smoke yeah mm. yo i don't care anymore so seeing as i don't give a rats a behind oh it's really very strikingly tough to be godly <laughs> <laughs> because you can't be ungodly if God has put you in a situation yours is to respond to that placement because it's what it is it's a placement yours is to respond to that placement um, with, with with biblical maturity you got to keep on basically doing what it is that you would do anywhere at all that God puts you evangelize you got to try and make disciples of all nations uh, snatch them some if possible even from the flames of hell like my god didn't you say that if they persecute you in one town flee to the next uh didn't you also say that dust your feet off and stuff like i'm thoroughly not even trying to walk around like an infj anymore door slamming anybody this is biblical i just want to go all i want to do is dust my feet off and say it'll be a better day on the day of judgment for the city of Sodom and Gomorrah and of Sidon and Titan will be for you and you and you <laughs> I just want to be able to say okay Minang Grand Lana a prophet has no honor in his own hometown it's okay bye 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 Grand Shop meaning Porra anyway so go find somebody else yeah to agitate with your stranger danger but as for me I'm going to that other corner because it looks more feasible to try and evangelize in it. I've been talking about how it is that I want to give the gospel to the Generation Z. I'm thoroughly intrigued by the Generation Z and the Generation Alpha, the ones that are busy getting born now. Because ain't nothing that I can ever do for no millennial. There's nothing I can do for no Gen X. Oh, I was going to tell a baby boomer, please, I can't help them. I can't. I proper can't. Eh. You know that saying old habits die hard. You can't teach an old dog new tricks. Hard by days. You've displayed that that's a thing. But unfortunately, 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 I am not being gazed upon by enough Gen Z's. These millennials and these exennials. Yo. I was like, no grand. It's like I'm a nurse, like Papa. Yo, whoa. It's like I'm a nurse at a nursing home, like for the elderly, where some of them are like super senile. <laughs> and I gotta be mature. I gotta be like Florence Nightingale. <laughs> I have to overlook offense, turn the other cheek, stuff like that. Mm, always trust, always love, always etc. Yo, wow. Work in love. <laughs> Work in love. <laughs> Yo, I did not at all sign up for a job in a nursing home. Dealing with the senile, I just wanted a job as a regular nurse, like proper. Hey, okay? it's yeah, proper. It's like it's like graduating from nursing school, and you you apply and you apply and you apply and you apply. You wanna go and be a doctor's assistant. You apply, you apply, you apply, you apply. You want to be a surgical assistant. You apply, you apply, you apply, you apply. You want to be 
a, a, a resident at a um like g g even at a war zone hey yeah uh, p p in being a member of the triage team and you are playing you are playing you are playing you are playing like you proper like every and every time in the application um uh, uh, website where it is that you go look for jobs you literally jump over you skip over <laughs> nursing home jobs like you just skip over them nursing home jobs you skip over you like hey, i don't want to work in an old age home i don't want to work in an old age home because you've got like ptsd from your grandparents you remember how they were when when you were growing up when they were sick and your mother was taking care of them how rude they were how they spat on the feet and how your grandmother the last word she said before she breathed her last was f you to her to your mom and you remember seeing that as a child and you were like never i am not working with old people anguas yeah based on based based on ptsd alone just post-traumatic traumatic stress making an observation of that nature as a child once you then after following in your mama's footsteps graduate from nursing school you apply and you apply everywhere you want to go and work in the united nations peacekeeping forces as as a nurse you are able to you are prepared to relocate even working go gaza facing you know the risk of like missiles landing in your backyard you you that chick you don't care anything but a nursing home and everywhere good well how is it full in a war zone come on like how's a war zone full i i don't they need new nurses in the ukraine i'll go volunteer it's fine you thoroughly want to go put yourself in harm's way rather than just you know that down the road from you less than a kilometer mm. there's a nursing home that has got like a vacancy open and they not only uh have that vacancy open but they also call you they know you that you just graduated and they know that you know some of the people that are residents there because they're in your neighborhood you grew up among them it's it's old people in your neighborhood the lady that always used to shout at you yell at you the the, the next door neighbors uh, 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 what is his aunt you know her she's there too the the dude that used to do the garden you know him he's there too when you were a child the the guy that that, that used to scan groceries the, the one that was working at the pharmaceutical down the road him too you know and all these people you remember how rude they were to you as a child they were not fresh they were not kind they were not sweet if anything the, the gardener guy used to always insist on continuing to mow the lawn and so therefore hit you with those little stones that when you are mowing the lawn they fly and then they hit you and they give you a bruise and every time you're like ow 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 he's not even like sorry little children he's like oh you should know not to walk by me when i'm busy working because you are messing with my garden work mm, you know them all right Dave. and then nursing home is out you're calling you on some high we have a vacancy open we just found out you graduated you want residency you want experience you want abc please come we will take you we will train you we will die yeah. and you like hey let me think about it all you slap them with is let me think about it you see yeah and you apply and you apply and you apply and you apply you apply you apply like no man's business you apply until steam is coming out of your hair but at some point you gotta pay some bills like your mama can't keep feeding you at some point you gotta gain experience your colleagues your, your your peers with whom you graduated at nursing school are going to excel above you they're going to do far they're going to move higher and higher and while you're still at home applying and applying and applying mm. so then you end up just kind of taking the job <laughs> in your neighborhood when you were prepared to go and be a nurse in a war zone you were prepared to lose your life that's how bad this thing was yeah and you go to that war zone and you go to another war zone actually right down the road you don't even have to use your car you can walk to work work and back every day mm. so it's convenient too but you know what it is that you're avoiding and now that you're working there you got to deal with the rudeness of people that when they were healthy wealthy and wise when they could still run a block around the neighborhood when they were still good that's what's good when they were still young in the pink of health and thriving they were so mean and they were so rude and they were so disrespectful and they made your life such a living nightmare and that you thoroughly can not fathom yourself catering to their every need no matter what rudeness they perpetuate because it's your job because it's your job now you grew up among them bajodella underestimating you because you're a child and now they're the little geriatrics in a nursing home and they're senile and it is like a magnification a graduation from what they were in their earlier years they've become worse and now you are getting a salary to take it in your stride now you are employed to accept it and there's nowhere else where you can go 
that's how trapped I feel by this thing that I do that's that's how that's what I take to God every single day every single day of my life I'm like there are people that can that will receive my message I'm sure I'm not unlistenable God the uh, the world cannot be so obstinate and so stubborn that they don't want to hear the gospel at all because if that was the case we'd, we'd be gone by now yeah, I mean if at all no one was interested in the gospel if there was no revival happening anywhere if there was no interest in the word of God at all we would not still be here we wouldn't there must be people who are still embracing you and I know that this is also true because I see all the stuff that's happening with YouTube channels um, across you know YouTube of other Christians that I follow there is a, a thirst and hunger for their content they are taking them up so it's not like I am busy planting seeds in a, a, an arid wasteland where there is absolutely no fertile soil anywhere I know there's fertile soil somewhere God everywhere like I've seen it on YouTube I've seen it on Facebook I've seen it I've seen Christians reach Christians or reach people for God some of the most stubborn you know coming around like yo it's happening <laughs> yeah but then you decided to go and put me in a desert for real like a desert can it like i gotta go and like bring out like a whole thriving jungle in a desert really could you just like not have sent me somewhere where you know my seed will will grow instead of it being choked up perpetually choked up perpetually choked up perpetually uh, constantly scorched by the sun mowed over by by beasts animals it be get, get, get vacuumed by um uh, hard knock winds it get what you call this uprooted uh, by torrents hard knock rain that is too excessive and so therefore not beneficial for growing crop why everywhere where i plant seed is there no fruit <laughs> what's going on god you know what i asked for i wrote poetry about how it is that i want to go and reach some children like I, it's been my dream for a minute like papa for a minute when i first came to the faith i wrote so much poetry speaking about how father i have a dream to reach the youth for you i was gunning for them babies i was i was gunning for the gen z's i was gunning I, you know my love for kids you know how good i am for the, with them and at the time though when i got born again those gen z's were still those gen z's were still some of them in crash some of them were in primary school they were still little babies i even joined a ministry of helps that was a sunday school in one of the churches that i attended precisely because i was gunning for this, those gen z's i wanted them they, they're the ones i wanted when i was living at, at at cosmo city i went and i grabbed myself a whole bunch of gen z children and they were at the time eight nine ten eleven and i encircled myself with them and i tried to inspire them in your word and they responded you remember you remember hey if at all you've been with me for any amount of time you will recall that i was once at cosmo city where another place where i was thrown by my family to basically just kind of you know gather dust mm. and i ended up basically running almost like a crash in that house <laughs> every day there were kids arranging from like two three years old all the way up until like perhaps 15 16 in high school they were always around me every day that house was just teeming at the falls with children i've got footage of that time that season that i have shared on youtube but all of my content has been privatized uh, from long ago but one day maybe i will show you i what have always been trying to deal with kids because i imagined you know like whitney houston i believe the children of the future teach them well and let them lead away show them all the booty they possess and shade mm. Yeah, I believe that they were the only way out of this craziness. The ones that will conquer generational curses of their parents because I, Allah, I, Ara, Hooners. All of those other chickens, all of those other dogs whose old habits die hard and you can't teach them new tricks. I'm not trying to deal with that. I don't want nothing to do with these millennials. I don't want my age group. I don't want those older than me. I don't. I want the generation after me. I'll take them. Let me run into the future with a train. I believe a shoe rain out of future. Teach a way, let her lead away. Shoot a world of booty, let her possess and shot. That was me. And now, 10 years later, look at what's happening with the Gen Z's because these millennials refuse to let me talk to them. These Gen X's refuse to let me talk to them. 
Look at my little sister. She is so disrespectful. She does not know whether she's coming or going. She has no regard for God. She hates him. She can't stand the name of Jesus. She's basically a Satanist that way. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, but in the beginning, she was prepared to listen to me when she was still the cheering at a future. Tisha Willy, let her lead away. Shoot a mother booty, a possession shot. Yeah. I tried to get, I got born again in 2011. She was young enough. She was still in primary school when I got saved. Primary school. So I was getting to her. I was able to. When I got born again, I took her to some camp. I was trying to get this child to know Jesus. Flow with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Mm. Now, she cannot stand the king. Why? Because a Christian has been so badly abused, persecuted, maligned, and underestimated in her presence that she sees no value in Jesus. She does not think Christ redeems. She looks at my life and is like, what's the point? Your religion has done nothing for you. At the age of 22. And she cannot see value in Christ. Look at this um, horrific not marriage thing that happened on the 7th of October in 2023 in Israel. The attack by Hamas into the kibbutzim and into the music festival. Basically just that massacring thing they did. Mm. Look at the response of the Gen Z's. <laughs> Guys, you don't understand. Like, you don't know what you've done. You don't, you have no idea what you've done. Like, that's your doing. You made those kids riot in universities. In universities. Like, they're chancellors, they're deans, they're presidents. Mm. Are aren't you condoning anti-Semitism? Or if not condoning it, they're not necessarily condemning it. Mm. They're losing sponsorships from Christian donors and whatnot precisely because of an inappropriate response to Jewish persecution on college campuses all across the US and Europe. In the US in particular, there's like a 21 year old Jewish girl that is suing her university because she does not feel protected by her leadership in her university. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, against the anti-Semitic sentiment that has raised up in the sky. How how did the, the, the Gen Z's get to that point? How did those little babies get there? How did those children get the future? Tisha Willy, lead or lead away. Show them all that booty, that possession shine. How did those cute little girls and boys, those lovely, wonderful, amazing little babies, how under heaven did they become so demonized? Hey, remember 9-11 in America? Mm. After 9-11, how many people in the United States of America, in universities at the time, how old was that? Well, during 9-11, I was a child, I was little, I was, uh, I was definitely not in, was I in varsity? Uh, maybe I was in first year, I stand corrected, whatever y'all. When 9-11 happened, and that whole Osama bin Laden thing. No, I was in high school. I was in high school. I remember now. Mm. When Osama bin Laden did what he did. Mm, yeah. How many Americans show of hands? Those of you who know. How many people in the US of A show of hands? Mm, uh, celebrated in jubilation that attack on the Twin Towers and saying that we need liberation from the West. How many people in the US did that? No, instead what happened? There was a whole bunch of Islamophobia that was rightly raised up in the world because of the recognition of how extreme Islam can be when they, in the name of holiness, in the name of their God, they want to target anybody. Mm, yeah. Yeah, there was a whole bunch of Islamophobia that caused airports to basically kind of persecute people that looked a particular way. And there was so much, to, like, just, just over checking of everything and everyone to a point where you could not bring water bottles in your luggage there are certain things you could not bring lest it should be a bomb blah blah there was lots and lots of airport security that made it near on impossible for people to uh you know traffic certain goods just in their little carry bags yeah across across lands you know you could no longer bring even like meat you could not bring uh like hair product you know that you use in south africa for for growing your hair you could not fly with it to america anymore because what if this yeah it, there was just like uh, too much border security checking what not thingy my bobbying airport security mm, that's what it produced and there was a concerted sentiment by all americans that what needs to happen is retaliation we need to protect ourselves as a country we must stand in unit in, in solidarity 
with one another and we now know that there is a threat among us university campuses in there did you you do not find students hopping up and down saying well done osama bin laden yes you finally handled these americans ain't no muslim student in an american university would have ever had the brazen bravado the audacity to hook up a placard with an afghani flag where it is that he in the name of his freedom of religion and also freedom of expression would then stand in solidarity with the people that have just brought down the twin towers in america he would have been immediately arrested and questioned as a terrorist you know apprehended asked do you know him? Do you work personally with him? What is your involvement in this thing? Mm. If anything, Muslims hunkered down. They calmed down. They, you know, chilled. They sort of kind of retracted and they obeyed the rules in the country where they were living so as to not face uh, any more persecution for just being Muslim. Yeah. You know why that happened? It was because christianity was the dominant religion in america which still it is to this day children were being trained a particular way good was still good and evil was still evil and so it was identified pinpointed earmarked as evil that which happened on 9 11 and there was no different doctrine ever trained children so kids pretty much us the equivalent or the ten amount of gen z's of the time so the millennials of the time we appropriately responded to 9-11 across the world, across the world, all across the earth. We appropriately responded to 9-11. In America, they appropriately responded to 9-11 and all across the world, the world looking at that massacre appropriately responded to it. They knew that Islam was wrong, Islamic Jihad was wrong, Osama bin Laden had to get busted, he had to get caught. What happened over there was an abomination, it was wrong. It was just absolutely, you don't just get to do that to a sovereign country and we also rightly labeled or targeted um, um, what is this ISIS as as a terrorist group and Osama bin Laden as the, the most wanted man alive Yeah, the whole world looked at life like that. And so really and truly justice prevailed didn't it? Mm.